Who would have thought that a novel from the 1930s warning about the dangers of Nazism would become one of the most popular US TV shows of the 1980s? This science fiction adventure went by just one letter, V. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my podcast. The visitors arrived in 50 gigantic motherships, which stunned the world with their monumental size and power. We have come in peace because we need your help. And in return, we will gladly share with you all the fruits of our knowledge. Talk about an offer we can't refuse, huh? I wonder what would happen if we did. Manufacturing plants around the world were retooled to produce chemicals the visitors need for survival on their planet. Hello there. I bid you a warm welcome to They Came From Within Cult Movie Reviews V for Victory V 1983 to 1985 The screenwriter Kenneth Johnson had already worked on The Six Million Dollar Man The Bionic Woman and The Incredible Hulk before turning his attention to Sinclair Lewis's 1935 novel It Can't Happen Here a dystopian alternate history tale in which a Hitler-esque dictator rises to power in 1930s America. Johnson adapted the book into a script called Storm Warnings in 1982. But the heads at NBC were not comfortable with the concept. They even felt it might be too complex for the average viewer. Kenneth Johnson wanted to retain its central message, so he transformed it into the sci-fi saga we know as V. It all began in 1983 with a spectacular two-part miniseries. A huge alien fleet, known as motherships, start appearing above the Earth. The alien visitors, who appear human in form, first present themselves on top of the United Nations building in New York City. They of course claim to have come in peace, stating that they merely need some of our resources for their ailing planet and in exchange they will share their considerable technological knowledge with us. But things soon take a very sinister turn once the visitors are deeply embedded in our planet. The human race becomes increasingly enslaved by invaders who are really reptilian in form, leaving it up to resistance fighters to take on the might of the alien visitors. These parallels with excellent TV war dramas, such as the BBC's Secret Army, are very clear. The enemy is insidious and fascistic. From the get-go, you simply have to take a look at their uniforms, emblems and weaponry to figure out which European dictatorship they're modelled on, which instantly makes them both effective and chilling. Even so, it was hard for viewers to entirely despise the visitors, seeing as their leader on Earth, Diana, came in the form of a very attractive woman, and Jane Badler played the imperious role to the hilt and she was cast just one day after her audition. Jane was voted Miss New Hampshire in 1982 and she took part in the Miss America pageant of 1973. She was a soap opera star before being cast as Diana in V. The two most prominent freedom fighters from the first miniseries onwards were the television cameraman Mike Donovan, and the biologist Julie Parrish. Mark Singer, the older brother of Laurie Singer, of fame and Footloose, played Mike, and the beautiful blonde Faye Grant portrayed Julie. Mark was perfectly cast as a muscular barbarian in two Beastmaster movies, and Faye well and truly lost her prim image as an unfaithful wife in the excellent Richard Gere vehicle, Internal Affairs. Another memorable character from the Resistance movement was Ham Tyler. 
He was portrayed by the terrific Michael Ironside from the second miniseries onwards. Ironside is a Canadian actor, usually associated with playing larger-than-life villains, such as in Scanners, Total Recall, and Highlander 2, The Quickening, and shortly before he haunted our collective nightmares. As Freddy Krueger, Robert England appeared in V as Willy, a kindly alien who collaborates with our heroes. Hello, Diana. Welcome, Commander. The leader sends his greetings. I'm afraid that you've caught me by surprise. It disturbs me that I was not informed earlier of your arrival. Oh, I'm so sorry, Diana. I hope I haven't thrown you off schedule. No, no, I would have liked more time to prepare a reception for you. A reception befitting a supreme commander. Well, how very thoughtful of you. The original two-part miniseries, which was aired on the 1st and 2nd of May, 1983, cost $13 million to make. A huge amount of money for early 1980s television. It's just as well V was a huge success. It was followed up by the three-part miniseries V, The Final Battle, which was shown on the 6th, 7th and 8th of May 1984. And it was popular enough to result in a 19-part TV series, which itself was broadcast between the 26th of October 1984 and the 22nd of March 1985. Unfortunately, unlike its two predecessors, the series was filmed on a small budget and it often showed. Which isn't to say it wasn't entertaining, for it definitely had its moments. Strangely enough, the show was cancelled even before the cast and crew had a chance to complete the 20th episode. Tragedy struck in the early days of this TV series. Dominique Dunn was cast as Robin Maxwell, an anthropologist's daughter who has a sexual relationship with an alien visitor and becomes pregnant by him. Dominique, who had played Dana Freeling in Toby Hooper's Poltergeist, was strangled by her ex-boyfriend, John Thomas Sweeney. On the 30th of October, 1982, she died from her injuries five days later. Dominique was only 22 years old. Production was shut down for a couple of weeks and Blair Tefkin replaced the unfortunate Dominique in the role of Robin Maxwell. The lovely Sarah Douglas, best known around the world for playing Ursa in Superman and Superman 2, appears in the second miniseries as Diana's powerful alien adversary, Pamela. In 1992, Sarah and Mark Singer would appear together in Beastmaster 2 through the portal of time. The laser effects on the first miniseries were rather expensive, which explains why an excuse had to be found for the resistance fighters' use of conventional guns and rifles. V continues to charm large numbers of us science fiction fans. In August 2004, the American publication TV Guide ran a poll of the 25 greatest sci-fi legends. Diana was ranked at number 5. Unsurprisingly, Jane Badler was given a recurring role in the second series of the V reboot, which ran from 2009 until 2011. Mark Singer also put in an appearance in the updated version, but as a different character. V's original miniseries was shot between October and November 1982, and filming took place at various Californian locations. The two V miniseries were first shown in the UK together in the summer of 1984. It really was a TV event, and the teenage me loved it. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. You can find all of my episodes 
via most podcast platforms. And you can follow me if you like. Take good care of yourself, watch the skies, and bye-bye for now. Look, we know what's happening. Totalitarian suppression of the truth. Not only on television, but they've got the papers too. We are under martial law. And paranoia. You've got to be more careful what you say. What, in my own house? But he lives here. You don't really think you'd call them, do you? Mike Donovan has become a fugitive. Punch it. Scientist Robert Maxwell and his family, unable to escape the visitor's tightening net, have been given refuge by Abraham Bernstein, a survivor of Hitler's death camps. They have to stay, or else we haven't lined a thing.